We have a former principal, former teacher, and a socio-political and educational analyst, Dr. Ronan Matthew, in studio. Dr. Matthew has a wide breadth of professional experience, serving as high school principal for the American School of Kuwait, head of school for Island Academy International, Superintendent of the Catholic Diocesan Schools, Antigua, responsible for overseeing the three Catholic schools on island. Dr. Matthew also served as principal of several schools in Las Vegas, Nevada for many years, including the Canyon Springs High School, the Cheyenne High School, the Western Comprehensive High School, and the El Dorado High School. Good morning, Dr. Matthew. Welcome to Observer AM. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, thank you for agreeing to sit with us this morning. What are your initial thoughts, sir, on the ongoing turbulence in the main opposition party, the United Progressive Party? Well, first, I would like to say that um, your introduction was very kind, but I, I don't consider myself a political analyst at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I said socio-political. Okay. The, the social, educational, political. Right. Okay. I, when I come on, I usually... Just say that I'm a supporter of the United Progressive Party. Okay, great. And, and I'm also proud to say that that in the last general meeting that was held a week ago Thursday, I submit, submitted my application to become a member of, ah, the, of the United Progressive congratulations. Party. Congratulations. So while some, some people are leaving, others like me want to join. So Very good. hopefully my application will be ratified, and then the next time when I come on, I can... Proudly say that I'm uh, speaking as a as a member of the United Progressive Party. How how is it that we don't get that side? We we get all the resignations, <laughs> but we're not getting all the the great people who are joining the party. We don't get that side of the story at all. Well, I suppose that your your news people can seek us out and they can interview us and we can talk about why we're joining. But I'll tell you why I'm joining here. I'm joining because. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak with your leadership. I've had the opportunity to speak with the current political leader, Jamal Pringle. And I'm very impressed with him, to mm. be very honest. Yeah. I think this is a young man who is sincere. He's a hard worker. And when you chat with him or when you speak with him, you know, I personally get the feeling that he's not just listening to respond and give you a pat answer. Yeah. He... he, he, he Listens to hear what you, he listens to to hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. and gives you a response that he has thought about and has thought through. So, he's one of the main reasons why I'm joining because I believe that he will be the person who will be the next prime minister of Antigua and Barbuda. Despite what has been said about him, I think he's a genuine person. He has the support of the grassroots people, and I think he's making headway into getting the general support of the population. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm joining. I, uh, yes. And, and I, I like the fact that the sincerity, the sincerity, the, the genuineness about this, this young man, uh, which you picked up. I did, I did. I, as a matter of fact, I can say here without fear or favor that, you know, I had an opportunity once, well, maybe more than once, but I remember when Bar Barack Obama first announced he was going to be president, uh, he was going to run for the presidency of the United States. He started his campaign in New England. And the next weekend, he was in Las Vegas and I happened to have been invited to hear him. And I got the opportunity to actually talk with him. Mm -hmm. And in talking with Barack Obama for about five minutes or so, it's the same feeling I get when I talk to Jamal Pringle. Wow. It's wow. the same feeling I get. I, I, his sincerity, his honesty, his integrity and the fact that he's putting the people of Antigua first. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts, though, on what is be, be being um, published in the press as turbulence or turmoil in the United Progressive Party? What, what's your assessment? Well, I mean, if you want to... <laughs> all of this started happening, as I see it, to the build-up to the... To the um, convention. To the convention. And the moment that I heard that some candidates and persons in the Senate and some persons who were parliamentarians had signed a letter mm -hmm. supporting one candidate over the other, and I said, this is madness. You can support whomever you choose to support, but why put it in writing that you're supporting one person over the other? And I believe 
this is just my feelings now, that people were coerced, coerced into signing that letter. And I think that we should find out, and well, you guys are in the media, so you, I've never heard anybody ask, who asked you to sign that letter? Who was it that asked you to sign that letter? Who was it that coerced you to sign that letter? Mm -hmm. Who is it that demanded that you sign that letter or else? Because my understanding is that was done. I, I could be wrong, but if a person within the United Progressive Party knew that or advised them to sign that letter, knowing full well that it would create a great divide in the party, why would they have done that? Mm -hmm. They might have done that because they felt that they, it was a sure thing that somebody else would have won. Having said that, though, somebody did win. Regardless of who won, I believe that it was incumbent upon the other members of the party to put their differences behind. I mean, what are you trying to do? Win an election or you're worried about your feelings getting hurt? Some people had hurt yeah. feelings, so it's time to pull up your pants and say, hey, this is what happened. Some of us lost, some of us won, but we need to get behind the current leadership mm -hmm. to make sure that we have a new government. And the new government that we intend to have is the United Progressive Party being led by Jamal Pringle. Yeah. Now, the, the party is governed by a constitution, and a constitutional provision is the biennial convention. Uh, the party held that convention as per the constitution. What went wrong? Uh, you, you talked about the lead up to the convention um, with that letter that was signed by several persons. What went wrong after the convention? Well, uh, you know, it's, signing a letter is one thing, as I said, and supporting whomever you choose to support is, is another thing. Coercing people to sign the letter was something completely different. And I would suggest to the Progressive Party, and somebody should admit that the letter came from someone. Who did that? And that's the big question. And I think those in the media should ask that question too and demand to know who did it because the person who did that did a great disservice to the party. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I guess I, should <laughs> I shouldn't continue because to talk about that letter, but I think that was the genesis of the, of the, um, the rift, so to speak. The fact of the matter is a convention was held which was required to be held. And somebody won and somebody lost. Why this rift because of that? I have heard time and time again, and I've heard quote-unquote political analysts. I don't know what qualifies you as a political analyst. I know I'm not one. That there has to be introspection mm -hmm. in the party. Okay. I've heard that, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is it you want the leadership to introspect about? I want you to tell us or to say, if you don't believe the leadership listens, when have you requested a meeting or requested to hear your views and the leadership, whether it's DJ Isaac or Jamal Pringle or Sean Nicholas or Harold Lovell or whomever, did not listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Tell us what it is your gripes are. Don't just say they won't listen or there has to be introspection. What do you want the party to, to be introspective about? Have they been coming, have these persons who are now resigning and using people's names, the last letter I saw, the person who resigned apparently has been a UPP supporter for 30 years and now is resigning and saying needs, needs to be introspection. At the same time, you signed, you used the names of the former prime minister and the former, dip, uh, former leader in the letter. What was the purpose of that? If you're dissatisfied and you're leaving, did you write that letter using their names to suggest that they're supporting your departure from the party? Mm -hmm. I have not heard, have not heard um, the former prime minister and the former leader say that. I mean, mm -hmm. he's supporting the, the, the numerous resignations that have happened. And it seems to me that they're doing it strategically to continue to, to harm the party. What is it these people want? Do they want to change the government? Or not? I, I want us to get. I want us to get to that because I think that um, people have lost focus. It, it seems as though they have lost sight of what the opposition party is about, and what their mission is. Is is your mission to divide the party, or is your mission to get into government to remove a wicked, corrupt, inept? incompetent government is that the focus 
And, and I think um, uh, 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 persons have to determine what is the focus of the party. What do you suggest, um, Dr. Matthew, the political leader, the duly elected executive um, leadership, what should they do at this time with the, the many resignations from most persons who are not happy with uh, the outcome of the convention? Well, well, you know, I'm not that much into formality, so you can just call me Ronan, eh? I'm more comfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> uh, what, what, does the, what does the party have to do? Is that what you're really a- yeah, asking me? The, the leadership. Well, I mean, let's look at it from the perspective that, that um, at one point there was a single person in, in parliament. Persons, DJ Zeliza, Cara Lovell, Sean Nicholas, Jamal Pringle, rebuilt the party to where it came six votes away from taking power. I will say to you that I firmly believe the leadership there now will rebuild the party Mm -hmm. and win the next general election. I'm confident of that. You know why I'm confident of of that? Because I see that Jamal Pringle has the gravitas to, 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 to pull the people of Antigua together. You know, in my mind, what he is experiencing is something that Baldwin Spencer also experienced. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say it because I like to think that I, I, I call it as I see it. The fight that I see going on right now is the fight between the haves and the have-nots. The fight between the elites and the grassroots people. Say whatever you will, but from the time I returned to Antigua, and even before I left Antigua as a little boy, I saw that we had a bifurcated society. Mm -hmm. There was the rich and poor, the people with power and the people without power. And what is happening, as I see it, is that here's Jamal Pringle, a young man from Tyrrell's village, who nobody expected to be in this position, but he has worked his way diligently to be in the position that he's in. He's a businessman who I understand started this business since he was in high school and has worked his way up to be a successful businessman. What is it that you don't like about him? I was speaking with a friend who happens to support the Labour Party on Saturday, and he said to me, all of them are corrupt. All politicians are corrupt. You have corrupt people in the Labour Party and you have corrupt people in the UPP. And I listened and I said to him, tell me one incident of corruption in which Jamal Pringle has been involved. One, just name one. You know he didn't name any, he changed the subject. And I said, exactly. So not all politicians are corrupt. Mm -hmm. So I'll get back to what I said. I think Jamal Pringle has the ability and is making strides in getting all the people behind him. I know he has the support of the grassroots people of Antigua, and he also has the ability, in my view, to get the support of a broader cross-section of Antiguan society because they're going to see that he's sincere and he means what he says and he puts people first. Is there anything that you think the leadership uh, should be doing to heal wounds and to mend bridges? The current leadership or the former leadership? Uh, The the current leadership. Well, I'm going to start with the former leadership. Mm -hmm. I think it would be tremendous if the former prime minister and other former leaders in the party would come forward and give their support verbally to Jamal Pringle. Once again, I will ask the question. They have for years and years and years has spoken about the ills of the Antigua Labour Party. Am I correct? Yes. So now that they are not no longer in the political arena, so to speak, actively, are they now in favor of the ALP? I don't think so. I think they are still in favor of the party that they built. Mm-hmm. So why aren't they helping and to, to coalesce the party and, and bring the party together. That needs to be done. Now, what is it that you, you ask me, what is it that the current leadership should do? Yeah. My understanding that is the current leadership has done quite a bit, actually, have reached out to these folks who 
you know, you hear rumors who are not happy and ask them what they're not happy about and they're not really expressing their views about not what they're not happy about. I suppose they're not happy about essentially that they lost in the, in the, in the um, convention. They lost whoever they chose as the leader and they lost. And some of them are not happy about that at all. I sit here and I believe strongly that had someone else won, there wouldn't be this uproar. Is this about taking up your marbles and going home after you've, you've lost? Mm -hmm. That should not be the case. Yes, I understand that feelings were hurt. Points of view were not, you know, did not come to the fore in terms of what they believe would have happened. But that's the way politics is. That's the way life is. You don't always win and you don't always lose. We have a party, a united progressive party. That's the first word of the party, united. And if you are there to disrupt, now I heard somebody say that um, in, in, the, in, the, in the meeting, you know, these things happen. And, and Pringle has also said, Jamal Pringle said publicly that night, come and talk to me. If you believe I've done you any wrong, if you believe that we're not listening, call. I'm at the end of a phone. Just call me. And we will talk and try to work things out because there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture here. Now, now let's not pretend that um, this happens only to the, to the United Progressive Party. I remember some years ago when there was a challenge to the leadership at the time, there were two persons vying for leadership in the Labour Party and they were in disarray. Mm -hmm. One of them won, not the established candidate who has been there for years. The other person won and there was an uproar, but they were able to bring the party together and win the next election. And I believe that the, the, the UPP is also capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. Because after all, I believe that the, the, in the last election, the UPP won more popular votes than the LP did. What should the party supporters be doing uh, at this time? People who are at home listening to this and are wondering about all the resignations and hearing uh, from different uh, points of views on this. What, what do you say to party supporters? I would say to them, everything takes a little time. Everything is going to be okay. The leadership is working to bring the party together. We need to believe in someone. The person who is the leader now is Jamal Pringle, and he seems to have a clear vision of where the party should go. And it takes a little time. Persons who are resigning are doing so for whatever reason. But I believe, and I said that, the majority of the people already believe in him because, remember, after this let letter was signed, what did Jamal Pringle do? He went out and spoke with the grassroots people. He spoke to the people in the branches, mm -hmm. told them what his vision was, and he won overwhelmingly. Can he do that again? I believe so. Yes, he can do that again with the general population of Antigua, not just the people who are members of the party. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you, you talk about the big picture, and uh, the, pic the big picture is what lots of people are losing focus uh, of. This time that we now live in, Doc, is the perfect time <laughs> for the Gaston Brown administration to call a snap election. The opposition party appears to be in turmoil. There are these resignations and so on. Is the opposition in a position to pivot, to take the guns off of their fellow brothers and sisters, and to turn the heat onto the current administration if a snap election were to be called? Well, as I, as I told you when I started, you know, I, I just applied to be a member of the UPP. So you're asking me a lot of questions that yes, I'm, yeah. not in, into the, um, I'm not into the leadership or anything. I'm just an observer. What I can tell you, you asked me <laughs> that question about the, um, the UPP. But what I can tell you is that my belief is that the LP's leadership is deathly afraid of the UPP. If not, they wouldn't be picking off the people in the UPP. And if, even though they will deny offering them remuneration, maybe they are. But what I do know is the last person who was picked off is now the Minister of what? Agriculture. Okay, so therefore that means he has been rewarded in some way. So the ALP is deathly afraid of the UPP. That is why 
people can publicly say, I didn't have any persons come into my district. I moved people out because they wanted to win. The ALP has always existed for one reason only, in my view. That is to win the next election. Mm -hmm. We get elected, our view is to win the next election. That's why Antigua is in the state that it's in. Mm -hmm. The roads are horrible. Electricity doesn't come on regularly. It comes on and goes off. Has the water, has the water problem been solved? No. The, LP, the, the LP's focus is always win the next election. That's it. <laughs> I don't think you have, you have uh, answered my question. That was, deli the that was deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I didn't tell you that I had all the answers. Yeah. You can address those issues regarding what is the, are they ready? Obviously, they're not ready yet because they had, don't have a slate of candidates. And will they be ready? Yes. Yeah. But are they ready now? No. Okay, so so the political leader of the um, of the United Progressive Party was on this show, and he said that October will be a very busy month, um, getting Correct. at I least heard him, yes. ten candidates ratified as caretakers. Do you agree with this renewed focus on shoring up the candidates, on focusing on what the goal is, what the bigger goal is? Well, the goal is to win the election, and in order to win the election, you have to have candidates who are running. And I believe that he will make the right choice in selecting the candidates to ro who, who will be representing the different constituencies. Yes, I believe so. Okay. I believe in him. I believe in his decision making. I believe in the leadership. I believe in his decisions. I believe in the decisions of DJ Isaac. I believe in the decision of the leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a, a, a biennial convention which would be in another two or so years. If yes. persons wish to challenge uh, Mr. Pringle's leadership, they can do that again. Correct. Yeah. W what is your core message, Doc, uh, to the main opposition United Progressive Party at this time? My core message or my core feelings are that we should not get sidetracked. You have an election to win, the next election. And, I mean, I could get into all the other things like the Alpha Nero. They make bad decisions too. I mean, I don't know who in their right mind would tell somebody or which government in their right mind would say, we're going to seize this boat and sell it because now it's ours. Mm -hmm. I mean, who does that? Some of the other things that are done, you know, who would, who would, who would say, let me, let, let me participate in this scam with some guy in Nigeria named Marvelous Mike and form Antigua Airways and bring 900 poverty-stricken Africans here. Because let's face it, we saw that some of them, majority of them were poverty-stricken. I can tell you personally, I went into a store uh, in an area there and three of them were buying two onions and a, can, a small can of evaporated milk and they didn't have the money and I bought it for them. Some of them drowned on their way to St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. So the government has done some things which are and made some very bad decisions too. Mm -hmm. I and we don't hear we don't hear anything at all about that, yeah? Well you're hearing that about it now because that is something that has stuck in my craw. Yeah. How we as a country, with our history of slavery, could have done that and allowed this to happen. Nine hundred of them came, how many? Fourteen or sixteen drowned. I c I don't know if you can find one of them in Antigua still. Where did they go? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to just sit here and focus on the UPP is not doing this, the UPP is not doing that. Look at what the LP is doing as well. Look at what they're doing. How many buildings have been sold? I think a building was sold by oil refinery. And what did the head of oil refinery say? I'm not going to tell you about the, um, the, 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 the process or how much it was sold for. It's a private company. We hear all that kind of nonsense. We hear that that guy who was the head of the port coming out to English Harbor and telling us a bunch of lies, in my judgment, regarding the Alpha Nero is going gonna, gonna to be a problem during the hurricane season and blah, 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 blah. Next thing, we're going to grab it for its own safety and then sell it. It sat there for two years or more, and we had to expend, I don't know if millions, but certainly hundreds of thousands of dollars, and who got that? We have not been shown the, the, the paperwork to see to see how much money was actually spent, who got commissions. I was here in 2016, Hurricane Irma. It was said that over $200 million 
was needed to rebuild Barbuda. Mm-hmm. Did we ever know how much money was collected? Did they ever tell us? Did they ever tell us how much money was spent? Mm-hmm. And did the donations get to Barbuda? They're yeah. still outstanding donations. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many other things that are happening that, that um, we need to, well, we could be talking about, but instead we're talking about the UPP. And that's the point I'm making is that the, the people who genuinely are in the UPP and want to see the government change should not be making efforts to destroy the party, but they should be making efforts to solidify the party and changing the government in the next election. I think uh, we are pretty much out of time. Uh, okay. I want to thank you, Doc, for coming in and talking. I with tell you us. already, Ronan is fine. Ronan, <laughs> Ronan Matthew, uh, thank you for sharing your experience, your wisdom, and uh, your insights on this matter. And I don't think that will be the last time that we have you on this show as a socio political and educational no, analyst. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> you you want to tell the title I'm most proud of? What? I'm a father. You're a father. Of two lovely children. Yes. And an Ovals man. And an Ovals man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank that you very last much. voice, Dr. Ronan Matthew. Uh, and he just announced to us that he has just become a member of the United Progressive Party.